as tailored to where you live in Madison County. You're watching Local News 8 at 6. Local people, local news. It is the weekend before the eclipse and we were expecting a lot of traffic. Here's a live look at I-15 northbound at down in Pocatello. Traffic moving along just fine. We're not getting any reports of any issues there. Let's also take a live look at what's going on up near Blackfoot. Idaho Department of Transportation has stopped all construction along I-15 for the entire duration of the weekend through Monday for the eclipse. Not a lot of cars out there, but we are expecting this to pick up over the next 24 hours into Monday morning as 24,000 people, 50,000 people, excuse me, are coming into our area for this once in a lifetime event. Uh, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thousands of visitors, as we mentioned, are coming into the area this weekend to claim their spots to get a view of the total solar eclipse. And with so many people, Beginning at the height of our wildfire season, the Bureau of Land Management is preparing for the worst, a possible fire. Local News 8's Taja Davis rode along with the BLM to see the area of highest concern. The Manan Buttes. It's dry. The grass is dry. The sagebrush is dry. We're in high fire danger. This area has already had multiple human caused fires this year. The BLM says 50% of wildfires in eastern Idaho are human caused. Manan Butte area is a huge concern because it is right in the totality path and it's already a very popular recreation area. It's close to town. It's very easy access. There's also lots of BLM land around to use for dispersed camping. The massive influx of visitors that will flood the area is a scary thought to emergency fire crews. August is the height of our fire season. The land usually at its driest point in the year. There is also this worry. That a fire will start and people will, will not know what to do. And in that situation, we want people to call 911 right away and get to safety. In the chance a fire happens, make room for emergency responders. Areas will be crowded and crews will have to be able to reach the fire as quickly as possible to ensure everyone's safety. Do what you can to lower those chances. Use a gas or propane stove. Don't park on dry grass. Make sure your trailer chains are tied up so they're not sparking into the grass around the area. Just do your part so that we can all enjoy the solar eclipse. In Manan, I'm Taja Davis. A stage one fire restriction is in place, banning items like fireworks and campgrounds in unauthorized zones. A fire near Swan Valley is now out, but not before destroying a shed. The fire started just after 4 o'clock near the intersection of Highway 26 and Highway 31. That's just on the edge of Swan Valley. We are told that a small shed was damaged by the fire. About an acre of ground was burned as well. This fire is human caused, so let it be a reminder that you should not be burning. It is the result of a burn barrel fire getting out of hand. Idaho's two largest wildfires are burning mostly in wilderness areas. Officials say a wildfire today burned 17 square miles in the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness, that's in central Idaho, and another in the Gospel Hump Wilderness in north central Idaho. Officials are monitoring the wildfire in the River of No Return, but they are prepared to respond to protect life and property. All right, let's turn things now over to Aaron O'Shaughnessy, who has a look at our forecast. And Aaron, we are under a red flag warning. Not good to have a fire start. No, it's not, Chris. You know, we're having so many people come into the area for the eclipse, and all it takes is one little spark to start a fire. We are under a red flag warning. So what that means is we are seeing ideal fire weather conditions. So if a fire was to start, it is likely that that fire is going to spread quickly. So the Salmon National Forest or Salmon Chalice National Forest in the Lost River Range is just a few of the places that are under that red flag warning until 9 p.m. Here is a visual representation of that area impacted by the red flag warning that expires tonight. Now we are seeing low humidity. We're going to see high wind gusts tonight and we've been seeing dry weather conditions. So all of these factors is what's contributing to this red flag warning going on. Let's go and take a look at some of those winds across the region. So right now places like Pinedale is seeing winds around 18 miles per hour, Blackfoot 10. Idaho Falls 16, Chalice 17 or 13, it looks like, Salmon 13 as well, and Ketchum 13. Now, some wind gusts 
could get up to 25 to 35 miles per hour later today. So it's very important uh, that you use extreme caution dealing with fire today. Now we're going to see a low tonight in those mid to upper 40s. Winds are going to be between 7 and 14 miles per hour with the exception of those sporadic wind gusts that we are going to see and it's going to stay mostly clear tonight. I'll send it back to you, Chris. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Idaho State Police are investigating a deadly crash involving an Idaho Falls woman who was laying in the northbound lanes of I-15. It happened Thursday just before 1 a.m. Alexis Ferringer was laying in one of the lanes and was hit by multiple vehicles. She died of her injuries at the scene of the crash. One of the vehicles did return to the accident. Idaho State Police is asking anyone with additional information regarding other vehicles involved or unusual events to come forward. A Washington State man is in custody after he was driving the wrong way on I-90, nearly colliding with an Idaho State Police trooper. He was taken into custody on suspicion of drunk driving. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says police arrested the man about 2 o'clock this morning. Police stopped the man who admitted he was too drunk to be driving. He failed a field sobriety test with a blood alcohol content of twice the legal limit. A South Central Idaho man will spend the next 10 years in prison after police say he locked a woman and her children in a bedroom and monitored them while at work by using a cell phone app. According to the Times News, Joshua Brock Windmill received the sentence this week in the 5th District Court. Windmill must serve five years before becoming eligible for parole. He has been in custody about a year. He pleaded guilty in June to two counts of felony aggravated assault, possession of a firearm by a felon, and a misdemeanor count of violation of a no contact order. A central former University of Southern California football star is on trial for sexual assault in Utah. Osa Masina was in court Tuesday for an evidentiary hearing. It centered around a Snapchat video reportedly showing Masina and the victim together. The big question is whether that video actually exists. The only person who claims to have seen it is the accuser's ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend said while viewing it, he was able to see Messina and the woman were both naked. He says Messina was behind the woman and claims she wasn't moving and her head was down. I don't want to get into talking about its existence where and that is part of the issue here. Um, but what we are contending is that there is enough information to establish its existence and uh, we think it has value. Uh, as part of this case at trial and the rules permitted to be introduced. Judge is going to take a look at the evidence. It's a pretty low threshold about whether or not this evidence comes in. I mean, obviously the state has a right to put in the evidence they have, but the judge will give us a ruling on that and then we'll see. When the court does convene on September 21st, the judge is expected to decide if there's enough evidence to allow the alleged video to go to trial. A hurricane police evidence control officer is facing a felony charge of misuse of public money. This is in Utah, and according to charging documents, the officer is accused of giving evidence to a company owned by his daughter last year to be sold on eBay. The money from the evidence sold was not returned to the department as is normally done. The officer has handled evidence for the department for the past 10 years. The fatal terrorist attack in Barcelona may feel worlds away from us here in Idaho, though for one man, it feels like it was in his backyard. Emily Duke spoke with the man who grew up in Spain to hear his reaction to the attack. Javier Gondiaga has owned Gondiaga Motors in Jerome for more than 20 years, but he's been in Idaho much longer. As a 16-year-old, I came to this country from a little town is Lake Cateu, and it's in northern Spain and not very far from France. He told me he was the only one in his family to make the trek. My whole rest of the family is still there in Spain. Three sisters and a brother. Reasons Javier will make a long distance phone call after the fatal attacks in his home country. You observe and not much you can do, but you can make a phone call and see if all is okay. Gondiago is from northern Spain. When trying to compare the distance from the attack, he said it was like being in Idaho when an attack happened in Utah. That is you know, a little closer to you and uh, what it could be next time. It could be a little closer to home. Now, as people in Barcelona chant, we are not afraid, and as they leave mementos to those lost in the streets, he hopes they can take this tragedy and grow stronger. But I do pray for those that, with no hope, I just pray that uh, those people would get connected and they get that comfort. 
Idaho's unemployment rate has fell 3% in July. This is according to the Idaho Department of Labor, a release that was released last week. The agency says non-farm jobs grew by 4,300 with trade, transportation, utility sectors accounting for about 1,700 of those jobs. The, also, the total employment in the state climbed to nearly 794,000 during the month. This was part of the reason for the low unemployment rate is a drop in the state's labor participation rate. About 16 a percent of people uh, 16 years and older work jobs and are looking for jobs. The agency says Idaho's rate is 63 percent. That's the lowest participation rate since May of 1976. A Bureau of Land Management is closing a Haley mine after some hikers said something was wrong with it. Amy Reed shows us what led to the mine shutting down. Tucked up in Rock Creek Ranch is a stretch of the Haley Gold Belt that caught the attention of a couple miners. If I was a betting man, since it's in the Haley Gold Belt, uh, that's probably what they were after. They submitted their plan for a mine to the Bureau of Land Management, who owns this land, then got to work, skipping pages of paperwork, a few public hearings, and environmental assessments. A hiker made it up this path where our car couldn't. They saw the mine and knew something was off. So they called the Wood River Land Trust, who they thought owned the land. We figured out that the area that was being mined was not on our property, but some of the uh, soil and rock that was being disturbed was coming down the hill and crossing the line. They told the hiker to call the BLM, who told the miners they had to stop. I'm not anti-mining by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I'm very uh, pro-responsible mining. And that means following uh, the rules and the laws and the regulations and, and uh, you know, doing it in a way that's friendly to our environment. Now the BLM said the miners are welcome to wait out the process of getting the land ready for mining. But after withdrawing their plan of operations, it doesn't seem like the company is interested. In education news, there was quite the crowd at Mountain View Events Center in Pocatello today as thousands showed up for the annual back to school giveaway. Take a look at this. The line of people waiting to get inside was wrapped several times around the building. Inside, kids could pick up any necessary school supplies, pencils, notebooks, backpacks, even clothing. All donations came from the community, and outside there were things like medical, dental, and vision services. The event director says the goal is to have as many needs met in one place as possible. There's even a bounce house and Disney princesses the hope to get kids excited about school. 80 businesses and 20 local churches helped out. The goal really is simple is, you know, in our day and age, we can get so distracted where we are focused on our digital lives or we're doing our own stuff that we forget the most simple thing you can do is just to show love to somebody who's your neighbor. And this event is about taking our community and showing love to our community. So it's members of the community turning around and helping their neighbors who need help. This is the 11th year holding the event, but the first year at Mountain View Event Center. The director says they outgrew their previous space. He says they plan to see around 5,000 people come through and will help between 1,500 and 1,700 kids. A live look over Rexburg tonight. You can see just how dry it is out there, how long is it going to stick around, and just how dangerous it is for our fire risk when we come back. Have a new story or a tip? Call us today. Winger Sticky Finger Family Value Pack to go. Fingers, fries, and salad for the whole family. It's freaking amazing. We offer service and car repair at Teton Toyota to drivers from all over the region and for all types of auto brands. Our service center is state-of-the-art, which is why our owners bring their vehicles here for minor and major car repairs. Our factory-trained Toyota service technicians have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. Bell thinks that's something to bark about. You can schedule an appointment by phone or online. Visit TetonToyota.com. These lines didn't stretch themselves. This main street didn't sprout from seeds. And this office couldn't do a thing on its own. All around us, we're reminded we are more together than apart. And though the technology that connects us changes, why we use it doesn't. When you connect people, you get more ideas, more potential, more. Blackfoot, connect to more. Show you survived the Great American Eclipse with Eclipse t-shirts. Every time you put it on, you'll remember this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Go to localnews8.com today and order t-shirts for the whole family. 
Now, your first alert weather. Welcome back. All right, let's talk some weather. Taking a look at our Idaho Falls sky cam. It's, it's getting a little windy out there. We are seeing a red flag warning for a lot of places across the region. You can find more information on our Facebook page for Local News 8. Now, winds right now around 16 miles per hour for Idaho Falls with a current temperature of 87 degrees. Good news is it's going to stay pretty clear tonight. Taking a look at our first alert Viper cast around 11 p.m. for the rest of the region. It is also going to stay nice and clear. We're not seeing a whole lot of active weather going into Sunday. We're going to see temperatures get up into those upper 80s and into the to or excuse me, the upper 70s and into the 80s. Now Sunday night going into Monday morning. That's when we could see a little bit of activity. We are seeing a weak trough that is going to be moving through our area and that's going to continue through Monday morning. Now models will release some new data. Data, but as of right now, we're not sure the exact location and at what time that high elevation cloud cover is going to be moving out of the region. However, models are showing that we could see that band of high elevation cloud cover from Wyoming up through Blackfoot tomorrow. So again, we're not sure the exact timing of when that cloud cover is going to move out of the area, but hopefully it's not going to impact that time when people are coming to watch the eclipse. For the rest of the region, however, it's going to stay mostly sunny. We're going to see some broken cloud cover, but for the most part, we're not seeing a whole lot of active weather on Monday, which is good news for people as they come into the area. Take a look at Monday night, nice and clear. Going into Tuesday, that pattern is going to continue, but as we head into Tuesday night, we're going to see a little bit of cloud cover because on Wednesday and Thursday, there's going to be some potential for some isolated thunderstorms and some rain. Let's go take a look at some of those lows for tonight and highs for tomorrow. Preston's going to see a low of 54 tonight. So does Springs 45, Afton 40. Montpelier is going to see a high of 83 tomorrow. Lava 83 as well. Malad City 88. Take a look at Jackson. Jackson's going to see a high of 81 tomorrow. Driggs 80, Island Park 78. Lows for tonight are going to range anywhere from 37 for West Yellowstone to 46 for Driggs. Arco's going to see a high of 80. Salmon a high of 81 tomorrow. Lows range anywhere from those upper 40s and into the low 50s. We'll finish things up here in the Snake River Plain. Pocatello, Idaho Falls, Blackfoot, Rigby are all going to see temperatures in those mid to upper 80s. Lows for tonight with the exception of INL coming in at a low of 46. We're going to see those for the most part in the lower to upper 50s. Let's go and take a look at those eight day forecasts for the rest of the week. Starting in Pocatello, we're going to see a high of 83 on Monday, a low around 51 potential for some isolated thunderstorm activity both Wednesday and Thursday. And then next Sunday, we'll see a high of 86 with nice clear skies. Jackson's going to see a high of 80 for Monday, Tuesday, nice clear skies, 20% chance of thunderstorm activity on Thursday with a high of 77. And then next Sunday, more clear skies with a high of 79. Salmon, nice clear skies Sunday through Tuesday, then a little bit of broken cloud cover Wednesday and Thursday. For the most part, temperatures are going to stay in those mid to upper 80s. And taking a look at Rexburg. Rexburg is going to see a high of 82 on Monday, a little bit of broken cloud cover, but that sunshine is still going to be out. 20% chance of thunderstorm activity on Thursday with a high of 82. And then next weekend, we're going to see temperatures in those lower to mid 80s and nice clear skies. Pocatello high of 85 on Monday, Tuesday, nice clear skies, Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to see that sunshine, but there is that slight chance of thunderstorm activity. Temperatures for this week for the most part are going to stay in those mid to upper 80s. Lows for this week in Pocatello for the most part in those mid to upper 50s. We'll finish things up here in Blackfoot with a high of 84 on Monday. Tuesday, nice clear skies. Thursday, potential thunderstorm activity. And then next Saturday and Sunday, we're going to see those temperatures get back up into the mid and upper 80s. All right. Thanks, Aaron. We appreciate it. Uh, coming up after the break, we'll tell you how one city is not sure what to expect the day of the eclipse. SkyCam Network is sponsored by Jiffy Lube. Quick, convenient, and no appointment necessary. Keller Williams Realty East Idaho is number one in market share and listing sold. Contact Jim at jimwindmiller.com. Mondays. Hey, girl, do you smell that? They're back <laughs> with new guests and new episodes. Worst things to say on a date. Wow, you could eat. Whose line is it anyway? Mondays at 9, 8 central on The CW. Digital 8.3, Channel 19 on Cable 1, Channel 16 in Jackson, Wyoming, and Channel 9 on DirecTV. 
The total solar eclipse is Monday, and everybody is ready to celebrate. Local News 8 wants to see what you and your family did during the eclipse. So whether you're out at one of the community celebrations or a small family gathering, share it. Send us your pictures and video of where you were, what you did, and who you were with before, during, and after the eclipse to hashtag Eclipse 2017. And we'll share them during our newscasts on our website and Facebook page. Come on, Eastern Idaho and Western Wyoming. Share how you celebrated the total solar eclipse. Courtney Rose. Courtney. Courtney. Courtney Rose. Courtney. Courtney. Courtney Rose. Mr. Rose. Where's Courtney? Courtney. Courtney. Come here. Courtney Rose. Courtney. Courtney. Mr. Rose. Rose. Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose. Ah, you reached Courtney Rose. Courtney Rose for man. It appears as if local rapper Courtney Rose is our projected winner in the race for mayor of Fort Gray, California. Well. With the weeks leading up to the eclipse, we have told you how many areas have been preparing for the large clouds, and it's a lot. While many have been counting down to the days of the eclipse, Scott Logan tells us it's been a countdown to the unknown for the city of Weezer. When it comes to the Fiddle Festival, the city of Weezer knows what to expect. That's about 2,000 people over a one-week period. When it comes to this solar eclipse, everyone here agrees it's going to be something like they've never seen before. The little town of Weezer has never weighed such hefty cosmic consequences. For example, just how many people will be coming to view the eclipse? Kirk Chandler, chairman of the Washington County Commission, says he hasn't got a clue. You know, we've heard everywhere from 25,000 to 125,000 people come into our area, and that will just gridlock it. Chandler says the county commission worries there will be so much traffic, police cars, ambulances, and fire trucks will be unable to respond quickly to an emergency, and the county's already prepared a disaster declaration just in case. And then we have a lot of county roads that are only one way in and one way out, and so if you have a whole bunch of people out in those areas and they light a fire off, there could be a potential for a lot of people getting hurt. Will Overgaard, superintendent of the Weezer School District, says some school grounds will provide places for camping. School buildings will also be open so people can use bathrooms and showers. But this educator is most excited about the academic angle as top astronomers descend on Weezer from lofty places such as MIT and NASA. Am I mistaken that this might be the most brain power that's ever huddled in Weezer at one time? Well, you could say that. We're going to have some really great uh, scientists here that are just interested in st studying the corona. Restaurants are stocking up for what they hope will be a sonic boom to business. Being worried about electricity staying on would probably be a main um, concern of ours and keeping that food good and cold and providing good food in large quantities. The Weezer Chamber of Commerce expects to spend as much as $10,000 on the three-day Eclipse Festival. But you expect to uh, reap a harvest though, right? We hope so. That's, uh, you know, that's uh, one of the things that Mother Nature is providing with us with this Eclipse is hopefully a little boost to the economy of Weezer and, and to the economics. Seems how we had a, a little bit of a rough winter. We're hoping that Mother Nature makes up for it now with the Eclipse. Well, Weezer got pounded. Weezer got pounded. To say it mildly. So right now, there are many unanswered questions about this cosmic event. Questions that will be answered on August 22nd. You have to have those glasses to watch it. The Wyoming Department of Transportation reports increased traffic in the state leading up to the solar eclipse. A spokesman says numbers Wednesday and Thursday show overall traffic counts increased by more than 30,000 vehicles per day. He says travelers are using secondary roads as well as major highways. To help the situation, the state of Wyoming will prohibit oversized or overweight vehicles on roadways tomorrow through Tuesday. All right, when we come back, we'll tell you what Idaho Falls is doing to prepare for the big event on Monday. For over 50 years, KIFI Local News 8 has been there, supporting the needs of our community and every big story. And now, Local News 8 has entered a whole new era of broadcasting with on-air, online, and on-demand. Local News 8 is growing, and we need media specialists to help local advertisers grow their business with television and digital advertising. To apply, log on to localnews8.com and select the About tab. 
Join the Local News 8 advertising team and be a part of our exciting future. Big commitment. You jump in with both feet and you don't look back. I'm Jeff Newgard, President and CEO of Bank of Idaho. To us, small business is big business. It's the common thread in our local economy. At Bank of Idaho, we believe that the most important thing we bring to the table is our passion for building strong personal relationships with small business owners. Bank of Idaho, committed to community like you. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Local News 8 Sports Line is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers. Here come the last of our 2017s. Toyota's National Clearance Event is the best part of summer. And with 0% APR financing and great lease deals, it won't last long. Oh, I'm so excited. You are not alone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah! Yes! But my job. Lease a new 2017 Highlander for $329 a month during Toyota's National Clearance Event. Plus, every new Highlander comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Save on the last of the 2017s. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Emergency officials in our area are gearing up for the eclipse of the century. Nate Larson shows us how officials in Bonneville County are preparing for the event less than two days away. The city of Idaho Falls began planning for the total solar eclipse in October of Thank last you. year. Since then, they've brought together eight different counties in eastern Idaho, all with their own command post to tackle the swarm of people expected to descend on the region. This event is a challenge because we're expecting far more people and they're not going to just one location. They're expected to be going all over. Um, and so planning um, those resources when you, there's just so many unknowns. The Idaho Falls Fire Department has been gearing up as well. Their department covers 2,500 square miles with paramedic service, stretching through Bonneville, Jefferson, and even Bingham counties. They're bringing on an entire shift of extra personnel for the weekend to have all reserves on hand. Our biggest concern is access to people. Um, with so many people being in our area and uh, being on the roads, being able to get to our, our patients or our people that are having a fire emergency is really a concern. To make getting around a little easier, they'll be using golf carts and this mini ambulance. You can see in the back, uh, it is set up very similar to a regular full-size ambulance, but we can get to patients much easier with this. The area is already seeing people trickle in for the eclipse. This couple came all the way from England. What are you most excited about for the eclipse? Uh, just seeing it really, being part of it. Yep, long time till the next one. Being thrust into darkness for two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Putting off vehicle maintenance? We've got you covered. The highly trained technicians at Chiffy Lube do more than just oil changes. We also exchange transmission fluid, rotate tires, and more. All in a Jiffy. In conjunction with the Great American Solar Eclipse, it's the Moonfest 2017 Music Festival. To purchase your festival passes, campsites, or for more information, visit EclipseMoonfest.com. Your password isn't secure. There's nothing that a hacker loves more. But there's an easy thing you can do To prove the logger in is you Authenticate strong, authenticate Make your logins extra safe Protect your identity from tragic fate Authenticate strong, authenticate Use your fingerprint, your face or a code At home or work or on the road Two steps are safer than one or three or four. And keeping data safe is so much fun. Authenticate strong, authenticate. Make your logins extra safe. Protect your identity from tragic fate. Authenticate strong, authenticate. So when can we expect the rain? The rain's not going to start until Wednesday and Thursday. Salmon, nice clear skies for the eclipse on Monday. And then for a lot of places, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll see that chance of thunderstorm activity. But going back to Monday, a lot of places, it's going to be mostly sunny across the region, which is good news as visitors make their way to our area to watch the eclipse. Hey, if you really want to catch the eclipse, drive to Salmon. Get out of the city. Right? I hint, know. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> Go. Salmon, north. Keep going. 
go north. It'll be easier to see the eclipse. <laughs> and there's less city lights there. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, I mean, you can stay here if you want, but we're just going to be really crowded. It's going to be crowded. All right, we're tracking all the latest eclipse forecast, traffic, everything you need to know. We're going to be back tonight at 10 with all of that and more online at localnews8.com. Have a good night. guys we just wanted to bounce some ideas off of you about the wedding ceremony so we wanted to know if, uh, if one of you would like to read something at the ceremony okay well uh, yeah I guess I guess I could do that too <laughs> Two? yeah I kind of uh, <clears throat> have something else planned for you guys <laughs> do you mind telling us what it is sorry I'm kind of keeping this one on the QT well whatever it is I hope it involves winking So I just talked to one of the duel writers today and What is duel? Days of our lives. <laughs> anyway, you're not gonna believe it. My character is coming out of his coma. Oh, that's right. yeah. and, and, and not only that, I'm getting a new brain. Wait, what do you mean you're getting a new brain? Oh well, they're killing off one of the characters on the show, and when she dies, her brain is being transplanted into my body.